In the previous episode, I presented four reasons why quantile regression is a better alternative to the classic linear regression. However, I discovered that reporting quantile regression results can be quite demanding. To make the process easier, I created better plots for model estimates and model predictions and also created a comprehensive table of model results, including contrast between groups and p-values. I found this code so useful that I thought you guys might benefit from it too. Besides, I really enjoyed programming it. We'll use the wedge dataset from ISLR package to study the influence of job type, age and education on American salaries. We first create four simple models, one classic linear regression that calculates average wages and three quantile regressions. The low quantile calculates wages of low earners, the median quantile gets median wages, and the high quantile describes wages of the top 10% earners. We will then use the SJPLOT package to plot estimates of these four models for all predictors at the same time. While this plot allows us to compare results among models, different predictors usually have different magnitudes of estimates. High estimates are displayed in a better way, while low estimates are underrepresented and hard to see. This problem could be solved with a single line of code by using the remove terms argument. However, when we have many predictors and many categories per predictor, this solution becomes very inconvenient. So if you are only interested in a few important quantiles and have models with a low number of predictors, then the plot model function is the way to go. But if you want to explore the entire distribution of quantiles, creating a new model for every quantile would be necessary. And this approach would result in too much code and the plot might look cluttered with too many estimates. A more elegant solution for obtaining more quantiles is to use the tau argument with a sequence of quantiles of your choice. This way, we can easily create multiple models at once, let's say 20. Using the summary and plot functions would allow us to plot all predictors for all quantiles simultaneously. However, this visualization is hardly customizable and we cannot include estimates or p-values like SJPLOT did. To address this issue, I developed the idea of combining the visual results of SJPLOT and QuantTrack packages in order to create a beautiful and highly customizable plot. To do that, we need two tidy datasets, one containing the quantile regression model results and the other comprising the linear regression model results. This approach is necessary because despite the fact that the linear regression results are plotted in red by the QuantTrack package, which means that they have been calculated, I could not extract them from the model. If you know how, please put the solution in the comments below for the whole community. We need to tidy up model results because the classic summary function of any model does not produce tidy results. For that, we will use, surprise surprise, the tidy function from the rstatics package. Here it is important to use the setype neat argument because otherwise the default option of tidy, rank, would produce slightly different confidence intervals compared to SJPLOT confidence intervals, which would then not match on the plot. Having only standard error will allow us to calculate 95% confidence intervals on our terms. We then remove the intercept because there is a better way to deal with it, and we'll come to it in a moment. To do so, we can filter the intercept out using the exclamation mark, However, intercepts are often written in a strange way, with brackets for example, which can be confusing. Therefore, we can use the grapple function to get rid of it. The grapple function searches for matches to the pattern we specify. In our case, the word intercept itself is the pattern. Finally, we can use the add significance function from the rstatics package to add significant stars as a new column. Here is a quick interpretation of the stars. By the way, the double colon is a convenient way to use only one particular function from a specific package. For instance, in this case, I don't need to use the rstatics package anymore. 
using the double colon takes less memory on a computer and produces fewer conflicts between packages. For example, the tidy function is present in three different packages. But I digress, so let's get back to the topic at hand. Finally, we remove unnecessary columns from our tidy dataset and rename the p-value column. We are now ready to produce our beautiful and informative plot. To ensure maximum clarity and learning, let's program that fancy plot step by step. First, we'll focus on one predictor at a time. Let's filter out the predictor H and produce two smaller tidy datasets, one for linear regression and another for quantile regression. To plot the estimates of quantile regression and their 95% confidence intervals, we'll use a ggplot command with classic geomPoint, geomLine and geomRibbon functions. We'll display all possible tau values on the x-axis and finally, we'll flip the coordinates in order to make this plot similar to SJPlot's solution. It looks much nicer than the gray plot, doesn't it? Another disadvantage of the gray plot is that it sometimes doesn't show the intercept for some predictors. For example, it doesn't show the intercept for age, but it does for job class. We'll fix this by using the geomH line function to always put the intercept on our plot. This will display the strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis. The further our estimates are from the intercept, the stronger evidence we have against the null hypothesis. The next step is to put linear model results on our plot with geomLine and annotate functions. Here we could have used the numbers from the dataset directly, but imagine that you need to do this for 10 or even 20 predictors. And you'll see that we need to somehow automate this process of putting estimates on our plot. And that's what we do next. Namely, we use our small dataset with only age predictor. And first, we use the estimate as a line. Then, we use the annotate function to create a rectangle with lower and upper confidence limits for y coordinates and infinity for x coordinates. The opacity, color, and size of our lines would allow us to make our plot more appealing than the quant rec plot. Finally, we'll put the estimate and the p-value stars as a single piece of text on our plot in the location of our choice. We can control the location via the x and y arguments and adjust it horizontally via h-just or vertically via v-just when we need to. The base command helps us to combine a real text with a number and significant stars into a single piece of information. Similar to the results of linear regression, we can easily put the results of the three most important quantiles on our plot. There are only two small differences. First, we'll use geom point range instead of geom line and geom rect. Secondly, since our dataset for age now contains 19 different quantiles, we need to specify which line of the estimate or confidence intervals we should use. In our case, we'd use 2 for the first quantile, 10 for the median regression, and 18 for the ninth quantile. Putting more than 3 quantiles on this plot would unnecessarily clutter it but using the three most important ones seems optimal to me. And while estimates are useful, since we don't need to stare at the axis below, we don't really need the significant stars. And here is why. A simple trick to quickly extract inference from this plot is to look whether the confidence intervals cross the gray line. If they do, we usually can't reject the null hypothesis. If they don't, we can. Interestingly, the trick with confidence intervals works for comparing models too. So when red and green confidence intervals don't overlap, the models differ significantly. In this concrete example, that would mean that the classic linear regression, which says that the increase in age of one year would increase the salary by $640 on average over promises wage rise for low earners and under promises for folks who started their career with a high salary from the very beginning. Despite the fact that Quantrack package doesn't compare the tails among each other, even when different quantiles models don't overlap, 
I would see them as significantly different. So, this picture combines the capabilities of SJPlot and Quantrack packages. But that is just the beginning, because we now can put all the building blocks together and create a function that automates this procedure for any predictor in a multivariable model. If you're wondering why I didn't give you the function at the very beginning, the answer is simple. You might have learned less. Besides, copy-pasting functions, which I have often done, can create problems later, because I don't understand every part of the code well enough. And finally, it just wouldn't fit on the screen. To create a function, we simply combine the five steps we just coded. We only need to make a few changes to the already existing code, namely the first line, where we name our function and add the arguments we need. We only need three arguments. The first one is the predictor we want to visualize, and the other two are just pieces of text which we would put on the axis. Tidying up datasets goes without any change. Using the predictor argument instead of the name of the concrete predictor, like age, will allow us to choose predictors we want to see in the plot. Plotic estimates, intercept, linear model and quantiles also goes without any change. And finally, those two arguments of our function, intercept and estimates, allow us to automate labeling. And that's it. To demonstrate how efficiently we can generate comprehensive multiplots from complex multivariable models, consider this example. We'll first enhance our models by incorporating the education predictor with its five distinct categories. Next, we produce separate plots for each numeric predictor and each category of our categorical predictors and save them into separate objects. And finally, we put together all the individual plots into a multiplot using the patchwork package. I will not go into the code here, since I just published a video on using the patchwork package. Instead, I'd like to highlight the job plot, which now presents a completely different perspective compared to the original one. The impact of the job predictor on the response variable changed significantly because we introduced a much stronger predictor for wage, namely education. The effect size package and the eta squared function demonstrate that the effect of education is four times stronger than the effect of job class. Thus, education matters. Now, this phenomenon often arises due to a confounding factor, a topic that deserves a separate discussion. On that note, I'd be curious to know how many of you guys are familiar with the concept of confounding. Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, when we look at our fancy multiplot, we'll see four distinct subplots dedicated to the education predictor, each comparing a unique education category to the reference level namely no high school education. While comparing solely to the reference level may be sufficient in some cases, I personally prefer to conduct pairwise comparisons between all categories to extract the maximum amount of information from the model. This can be easily done with one of my absolute favorite R packages, the immense package. What the means package does is that it enables us to compare education categories pair wisely for every tau in the quantile regression. However, since seeing so many results can be overwhelming, we can restrict the taus to only the most important ones through the user-friendly tau argument. If you prefer to have 95% confidence intervals instead of standard errors, you can add the infer equals true argument to the immense function. The output of the immense function consists of two small tables. The upper table provides predicted values for every group of the categorical predictor and for every tau. The second table provides contrasts or simply differences between groups for every tau. To make these tables even more useful, let's first visualize the predicted values and then produce the best table of contrast possible. Visualizing predictions for each quantile is remarkably straightforward with the immense package and the emip function. 
All we need are the fitted model, the predictor of interest, the inclusion of confidence intervals, and the specification of the quantiles we aim to plot. In practice, plotting all quantiles is often unnecessary and will just clutter our visualization. That's why I often go for a maximum of three quantiles. For numeric variables, we must also provide a list of values for which we want to see predictions. Otherwise, the emip function will only produce the predictions for the average age for each quantile. The three tails are more than enough to tell a compelling story. Namely, common people without education earn similarly to the lowest 10% earners with a college degree, but still less than the lowest 10% of earners with the highest education. But even without education, you can be successful and earn more than some folks in a highly educated group in the lowest quantile. However, education opens more doors to growth in salary, as can be seen by the difference between the lowest and highest quantiles. The difference between the lowest and highest salaries without education is much smaller than the difference between the lowest and highest salaries with the highest education. The classic linear regression would have never been able to deliver so much inference, so that quantile regression simply rocks. And if you also find it as useful as me, please consider hitting the like button. Speaking of classic linear regression, the only downside to these predictions is that they don't include the comparison to the linear regression. But we can easily fix this by again using the immense package to extract predictions from each model for each predictor and each tau separately, and then combining them into a new data frame called, let's say, PRETS. We can then use a classic ggplot function with geom error bar and geom point to first create individual plots containing all four models for each predictor, then combine these plots into a single figure using patchwork package, and finally save this multiplot for publication in a format, quality, and size of our choice. Cool, right? But despite all the coolness of the prediction plots, we sometimes need tables with pairwise comparisons to provide p-values. Putting p-values on plots would clutter them, so tables are sometimes a better choice. And the best way to get such tables, in my opinion, is to use the table regression function from the GT summary package. Using just a few simple arguments inside the table regression function will produce a perfect table for any model. For example, we can create four tables, one for classic linear regression and three for the quantile regressions. Then we can easily put them side by side using the table merge function and save them in either Microsoft Word or PNG format for our publication. And there are actually so many cool things the GT Summary package can do that I dedicated the entire video to it. So feel free to check it out if you are interested.